This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, and my partner, Janet Barrett, coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. So nice to be with you again. It's nice to be here inside where it's not raining. <laughs> you had snow last week, didn't you? <laughs> it, yes, for a change. We, we must have got it up from Portland because Portland's the one that's been snowing. <laughs> and you know, the rest of the world, the earth, anyway, the U.S., I guess it's the U.S. has got all the snow problems. So we hope There's you'll all hunker down and listen like to us. Snow yeah. business. <laughs> well, right. so today on Conscious Conversations, we are talking about fact, fiction, and consciousness. In this po- current political climate, how do we navigate all the distractions that we're being assaulted with? Well, explore with us how to keep focus on what is important, how to use what is showing up around us in useful ways of empowerment. And Janet, you're going to tell us all about that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know... We're just noticing how much distraction is showing up out in the world. And we're really seeing it in groups and with clients. And it's how to stay focused and how to let that just be the surface tension and how to keep paying attention to where we are. So we thought we'd talk about that today with everyone. And we're going to issue you an invitation to go deeper with us, to connect with us beyond this show. And you can join us at our website, www.consciousconversationswithjoanandjanet.com. And there they're going to get what when they they join us there, Joan? Well, there you can listen to all of our archived shows. You can listen to our podcasts. And then you can also read our different blogs, uh, Janet writes wonderfully once a week on Mondays, and I write wonderfully once a week on Fridays. And then uh, we also have meetups. And Janet does meetups on Tuesday and Thursdays in Portland, in her lovely home in Portland. And I do mine in lovely libraries around the Puget <laughs> Sound in Seattle, Bellevue, Tacoma, and University Place, and sometimes other places when other meetups invite me to speak. Mm-hmm. And and actually in other places when I decide to do something special. So I have some <laughs> of those things coming up as well. But stick into the website right now. You can also uh, connect with us with our sessions. Uh, Janet and I both do sessions in person and also uh, through phone and Skype. Well, I do mine in person by phone and Skype. <laughs> so I do it. Yeah. <laughs> and our show is also on Facebook. So if Facebook is your preferred social media outlet, you can join the group and join the fun Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. You can also follow Janet on Facebook, and she is Janet Barrett. And I'm on Facebook, Joan Marjorie Newcomb, so you can join my my throng. And then, not thong, throng. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really bad image for me. Okay, yeah. and then on Twitter, we are both on Twitter as well. And the show is on Twitter at Joan and Janet. And then I'm on Twitter at Joan Newcomb. Uh, and I really can let loose on Twitter. So it's a lot of fun, and you will get information from people all around the world if you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> and then the show is on YouTube. So if you like YouTube, you can also binge listen to us on YouTube. And then I'm on YouTube. I do a YouTube video once a week, Mystic Minute, uh, talking about all sorts of mystical things and transformative things. And every once in a while, I'll teach a technique as well. So you can get lots of great information there. Do you want to tell us about uh, their conference call? And then oh, I'll come yeah. Back okay, everybody. This is coming up on the third Thursday of the month and for March, and it's the 17th, and it's our free conference call where we get up close and personal and in a small group for an hour. We focus on skill sets as far as how being comfortable accessing heart-centered awareness, and we have the most marvelous conversations and support that you find. And I say support because, you know, being in heart space, which we look to do every week, is that it's about warmth, support, and non-judgment. Those are the elements that make up grace. And we offer that to each other. And it's always a profound, remarkable, enjoyable conversation that we share and I want to invite everyone to join us and and see what you think let us know 
So please, that's this this Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific. And uh, you can find out more at Conscious with Joan and Janet at Gmail and get connected that way. So, And then I have meetups coming on. And Janet, you also you have a meetup coming up on Thursday and then next yeah. Tuesday. Well, can I, uh, yeah, tomorrow, yeah you're, you're right. I'm off Yeah, my get your schedule. day straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no time or space. space. <laughs> <laughs> Except a wackadoo, wackadoo, wackadoo. <laughs> You're right, exactly. <laughs> Floating down the river. So that's uh, Janet uh, in Portland. And then I have uh, meetups coming up in Bellevue this weekend. I am in Bellevue on Sunday at the main library downtown. I believe it's from 12 until 2. That's the 19th. And then the weekend after that, I'm going to be at the Emerald Spiral Expo in Kent. So that's not a kosher meetup, but I'm listing it on meetup anyway. Uh, and I will be there. I will have a booth. I'm in booth number 50 if you want to come visit me at the Emerald Spiral at the Kent Commons in Kent. And then I have a new offering. I'm calling it Conscious Master Class. Mm. It's a Conscious Master Class. So if you've attended my meetups or listened to my webinars, uh, I always talk about expansive things but in terms of techniques and everything you can only go so far because you always have new people listening so if you want to go beyond parallel universes then the consciousness master class is for you it is going to be a class in mastering this new way of navigating life as consciousness and i have an introductory sense session for you to get a taste of what it's like i'm going to be doing it as a webinar on thursday march the 23rd at 12 p.m. Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be doing it in Tacoma in person on Monday, March the 27th at 5.30 in the early evening at Cutters Point Coffee, which is on North Pearl. And then I'm also going to be offering it in Seattle on Sunday, April 9th at 1 p.m. And the location hasn't been confirmed yet. I am hoping Fremont. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And this is an introductory session. I'm asking $10 for it mainly for you to be to show that you are willing to invest in your own transformation it's a small price to pay for uh conscious mastery and uh navigating your life as consciousness so I you totally can totally recommend it people go for it oh yes yeah. i totally recommend it too yeah. so you will find more of that on our website conscious conversations with Joan and Janet and uh, I do have my meetup groups that are offered on meetup, but they're open to anyone uh, here Tuesday evenings and Thursday afternoons where we take a couple of hours and we have, once again, the most marvelous. I think that the challenge is or the delight for me personally is that whenever you spend time in heart-centered awareness with yourself and with other people, that it is priceless. And I don't mean to be, oh, pretty or dilettante about that at all. That comes from a deep, deep, sincere place within me that I take every opportunity to share that state with other people and we look at what's going on in our lives and how to how to bring it into the moment and what happens for people who come and who come regularly is just this wonderful unfolding that we all do. And, spe- and it's not especially this time. It's at any time. But we're noticing the energies of the world and how they're allowing us to explore places that we wouldn't have maybe accessed before. So this is an important time. So please consider joining us. You can check that out on Meetup. Uh, conscious conversation with Janet. I think it is dot meetup dot com somewhere like that. You know, I'm not good for that stuff, guys. <laughs> it's it's on our website. So go to on our my website. website. There we, we go. <laughs> we have a meetup page, and you can get all those details and lists right. and, and all the groovy stuff. So yeah, that's right. We have a website. <laughs> I have a website. Yeah, please give me a hold of me at Janet and Beyond dot com. And uh, we'll get you some information there. So, what we're talking about today is, like, you know, that you know, we always put these have have these jam sessions to figure out what our titles and topics and things will be. Um, and it came to me because we were started with distraction and how much is out there in the world, and it really comes out fact, fiction, and consciousness. And what is a fact? What's fiction? And we seem to have this in the national conversation now, don't you think? I do think I do think that there's a lot going on in the national conversation and there's a lot to actually say about fact fiction 
<laughs> and consciousness and it being a distraction. And yeah. what I'm aware of is I'm I'm distracted that in nine seconds we're supposed to go to break. So I want to just let folks know that we, you are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We stay tuned. We will be talking about fact, fiction, and consciousness right after these messages. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you are dealing with? Take a journey into your enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Janet is a subtle energies empath accessing the field of potential with warmth, humor, and support. She will help you to hear what your inner voice is saying. She will share with you how to appreciate who you are now and offer you new ways to understand and transform your issues. Reach her at www.janetandbeyond.com. That's JanetAndBeyond.com. Again, JanetAndBeyond.com. Transformation is possible. You can enjoy new outcomes in your current experiences. They can happen in the blink of an eye. Is your soul calling you to do something more meaningful with your life? Do you feel crazy for wanting to quit your secure job? Perhaps you are waiting until you retire to do what you love. Maybe you are too daunted to follow your dream. If any of these match your life, then Joan Newcomb's Purpose and Passion Coaching Program is just for you. In just 12 weeks, you will discover who you essentially are and why you are here. Learn to live as your greater self and navigate with conscious mastery. Go to Joan dash newcomb.com that's joan dash newcomb.com for all of her coaching programs you are listening to conscious conversations with joan and janet to reach our program please send questions and comments to conscious with joan and janet at gmail.com that's conscious with joan and janet at gmail.com now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet, and we are talking about fact, fiction, and consciousness. Oh, yeah. Boy, that, that's really what you want to do, isn't it? There's just so much hyperbole, and is that the right word? Hyperbole. Hyperbole. hyperbole thank you. And, uh, well, I hit several of those <laughs> letters. Um, not all the not. syllables, but several. No, no, no. <laughs> Intention was there. Um, so uh, let, let's see about getting into heart no, space. No, 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 no. No? We don't no, want to no, do no, that? Because, no, because I didn't get to say my oh. stuff outside of oh. heart space yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Go for it, girl. <laughs> because the moment I get into heart space, none of this is important. <laughs> yeah, right. So if I have anything I really feel strongly about, I better get it out before we go to heart space because after that it's like... Yeah. Up and down uh, the river. river. So anyhow, yeah, well, it's the, we were talking about how we get distracted from focusing and enjoying life and experiencing life as consciousness, which is really expansive and enjoyable. And the biggest distraction in the world today is what's going on in the news. I, I would say that the second biggest distraction would probably be things going on with your family or family of origin, but I'm taking my focus off of that. I'm pretty glued to Twitter. So there is nothing but distraction going on on Twitter. There's nothing but, you know, highly emotionally charged comments, uh, even news articles with really, you know, clickbait bait type uh, topics to them. And anything that is hugely dramatic or emotional is fiction. It is, it's not what is really going on. And it, what is really going on is actually pretty obvious or matter of fact. 
And when you view it as consciousness, it's just like, well, I, I, of course, I knew this all the time. You know, it's when he finally gets impeached for a treasonous acts. Some people might be surprised, but most of us are like, but of course, we knew this all the time. We saw this coming up in the timeline. Mm-hmm. And it's confusing, too, because as consciousness, you can actually make things change in the blink of an eye. We we can experience stepping into a parallel universe where life unfolds in a completely different direction. But um, but as as consciousness here in physical form, um, there's there just is what is evident, and that's what that's what fact is. I guess I still feel like putting quotation marks around fact, <laughs> but everything else is fiction. Well, I think. Um and my sense again is here, when I wrote the word that we're assaulted by so much information, um, and, and you can really feel the assault part. Uh, there is information coming at us in all different ways. And if I use the word information, then it's neither fact nor fiction. It's just bits of information, whether they're right, wrong, in the middle ground, wherever they are, the, all you feel is all this stuff line. And our social media adds to that. And you don't know whether something is coming, what the bias is in the information that's presenting itself. You don't always get that hit. And because you're in probably reaction state, so you're off on your, on your experiences of interpretation. And then you get, all this information coming that maybe has got hidden agenda upon hidden agenda upon hidden agenda in it. And we as sensory experiences, you know, experiential creatures, are trying to process all that at the same time. And when something hits sort of, then you, that's probably a good indication that there's more than something at work. There's many somethings that work behind it. And because I trust and respect how people are in experiencing information, I don't always agree with how they experience it, but I trust that they're experiencing something. So when that hesitation is there or when the confusion shows up or when the overt reaction shows up, I, I pause and I look. And I do it when I see it in others, and I do it in myself. So that's kind of what we were tracking was how, especially in groups I'm hearing this, about how people get off, and it winds up being a tangent, a distraction. Something really gets your goat, we can put it that way, grabs your attention, and you're busy there, and you're not seeing what else is going on. So shall we access heart? and uh, see what shows up for ourselves and everyone? I think it would be delightful to get into that focus. Thank you, please. (laughs) All righty, everybody. So, excuse me there. Um, Oh, how interesting. You can tell how unscripted this show is. (laughs) So, all right, everyone. So just notice. Take a moment and just allow everything to slow down. Now, there is no time or place or space in consciousness, so we're going to manipulate our human awareness to just the part of you that can listen, depending upon what you're doing and where you are, whether you're listening to us live or whether you're by podcast at another time. It doesn't really matter because it's just how much attention, conscious attention you're putting to us. The unconscious is soaking this up, so don't be concerned about that. So let's just notice together. We'll just notice. We're going to just allow ourselves to create an opening, and we'll start with the physical heart. So notice your physical heart. Okay, that's got a lot of stress and strain around it. So, let's just notice it. What if you could just love it? If you could just love it because it's yours, it beats, it reflects everything in your world, and just be okay that it's there. Appreciate it. Be grateful. It is you alive. Here we go. Yeah, what if you could relax? Everything's a little hyper out in the world these days. So just bring yourself to physical awareness of your heart. And then the second reference will be the emotional train of heart, the word heart. 
And so these are your emotions. And you have many and you have several running at the same time. And we want to just appreciate that you have emotions. Depends upon what you do with them and the reality sets that you hold your emotions as to what kind of emotions you run predominantly out of. But they are the flavor. They are what make life fascinating. And as consciousness, it gets to express itself that way. So don't judge them. Be grateful you have them. There you go. You feel everybody's shoulders are up high. So just allow that awareness to relax those shoulders. What if you didn't have to fight your emotions? Because it feels like there's a lot of that running. So just relax. And then we go into the third meaning of heart. Core, essence of all. It's where you and I and Joan and Cameron and all we know are one. It's beyond the level of the physical body. It's into where we're light photons, biophotons with a little bit of mass, and resonances and frequencies and vibrations and information. And all of it coming together in patterns. And so we just notice the patterns. And now in this context, the patterns can be different because this is all within the sea of potential. So in being in the moment, you are accessing potential. You're not in your story. You're going to notice what you think holds you together starts to get a little wobbly, a little soft. There we go. And you can just feel the constraints undoing themselves a little bit. So just allow yourself. This is real. This is in the moment. This is in real time. Allow yourself to undo a little bit. There we go. And in this place, it allows me to be aware of how I am one with you and you with me. People I like, people I don't like, people I know, people I don't know. All kind of gets lost in the soup here. Yeah, we got a lot of shifts going on there. There we go, John. What you got, sweetie? There's a lot of shifts going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a load of shifts. <laughs> yeah, those oh, those letters are so important, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it was great because as you were doing that, I was noticing that the agitation is all on the surface. Mm. And it kind of reminded me as like if you were, for instance, if you were scuba diving, you think snorkeling doesn't work because you have to stay near the surface yeah. in order to breathe. But, right. to breathe, but uh, scuba diving, you sink down. And so all of that tension, all the stuff by the wind and everything is all on the surface. But as you sink down, it gets quieter, it gets calmer. And as we get centered in consciousness, that's what it feels like. But if you are operating on just a surface level, that's where all the agitation is. Yeah, um, and I... You yeah. know, people talk about, you know, the, the world changes when you go underwater like that. And it's just so beautiful underwater. Good, good analogy. I like that. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I realize that from the space that you brought us into, that I don't have to react. <laughs> I don't have to react. Oh, oh gosh, There's nothing yeah. I have to do in this moment. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. That. No, go ahead. Well, what I was thinking, there's nothing I have to do in this moment. And I was thinking as you were talking how the agenda on the other side is to get people fired up and to get people emotional. And when you have them, they're more easily controlled when you have them emotional. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, meant to get them off kilter. And 
I was thinking that when we get into this space of calm and centeredness, and we can make a choice how to respond to things, we're in a very energetically strong space. And I suddenly realized it is that they, in the quotes, those people that are creating the headlines and are trying to manipulate us through heightened emotions, Mm -hmm. that they're the ones who are actually in that reality of heightened emotion. They're in tremendous amounts of fear and discomfort and, Mm -hmm. you know, worried that their fortunes are going to go away or whatever. Their identity is shifting. And that's really why they're, they're, they're behaving that way. Hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, one thing that always comes to mind when people tell me about other people and, uh, the harm we see in different things is that we have to remember that we co-create. And seeing someone and feeling ourselves as victim is not usually useful. And we have to allow for, no, we don't invite or wish anything on anyone. But we have to look at the energy. I look at things from an energetic place. And those that... um you, you just step back a little bit. Step back. Notice where your triggered point is. Where did where did you get it connected? Where did you get feel the pull? And then just notice if that's appropriate anymore, or if you're going to bring some wisdom into play and unhook or detach or just notice that maybe this time something could be different because you're in this state of awareness where it can be different. And that's the key is we are reacting from that human quality and not as consciousness where we understand that we're all one. So if I feel a pull, that's me connected to someone or something and I get to decide where I want to be in the next moment with that pull. And it's really about being very careful in uh, holding an open state that says if potential is available to me right now in this moment and immediately go back into this state, what is possible here? And that's what we're doing a lot in group is reminding people about that place. That's lovely. That's the, I, I'm just thinking of how the whole government would change if everybody could come from that place. <laughs> well, well, you know, I th- I think um, I because okay. So here's the truth. I think I embrace all of it. And I look at it from that neutral, as much neutrality as I can. Because I understand and appreciate that we're all human and that we're going to act out certain ways. And that is the delight I find in being recognizing myself as consciousness. Um, is that, well, isn't this interesting? And look at what, how we respond and where do we want to go and be with this? And for all the panic, yeah, and uproar that's available out there. For me, I just see that as, oh, let's get into that. You know how when you're provoked, usually that that response, that reaction and then the response tells you so much, right? But it's not about them doing something to me. It's about me seeing how they're making, allowing something to be available. And so I invert or I reverse how, you know, having something done and that's not that's freeing up that victim quality hmm. you mean in freeing up you mean by like releasing that yes birth, not yeah. letting it loose <laughs> no, no no but i but y- you know everyone goes away out of group feeling uh, so much softer than when they came in right because when the door opens, the agendas hit you as everybody walks in and you sit down and you go, okay, stuff's up. Let's just go back to heart and see what shows up out of that about your issue. And that's what's important. So. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So 
There's lots of information out there. So how do we sort it out, Joan? There's fact, there's fiction. You can't tell which is which sometimes. You just go with your gut reaction or what What more do we do? Well, yeah, no, actually, how I define it as different is if you feel very dramatic, mm-hmm. if it's if it's that kind of heightened dramatic, you know, chest-clutching chest emotion, then that's fiction. Mm, okay. And fact is either either it's just matter of fact and it just feels like what is. You know, and sometimes it feels like a relief. It's like, oh, that's what I thought was going on all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's fact. Now, you can have facts that, that bring up certain emotions like, you know, my mother died. <sighs> I feel mm-hmm. sad. You know, mm-hmm. but, but it's not super dramatic, chest clutching, you know, mm-hmm. our hands wringing kind of experience. It's, it's a different, if you can just sort of determine the same, the difference between how you're feeling the feelings and how you, whether you're yeah how you're feeling the feelings hmm well cuz we i cuz i could hear some people say oh well aren't you grieving right and mourning and yeah you are emotionally connected to the death of your mother however you felt about it uh or felt about her or you with her but uh so it, can you articulate that a little more uh, what well, yes. Yeah, so that, yeah, when we get into something about, oh, my mother died, and uh-huh. depending on where you are with the grieving, I mean, right. that, that, well, actually, even even that, I have to say, even that, if you're in a huge chest clutching grieving of, mm-hmm. about it, unless she mm-hmm. actually died right on your feet, mm-hmm. right there in front mm-hmm. of you, you're still in the car accident. You know, mm-hmm. that that's a different animal that I'm talking about. Or even, you know, my mother died, and that's a fact, but I'm sad that my mother died, and that's a fact. That's different than the world is going to heck in a handbasket, and, you know, right. I'm going to move to Canada or New Zealand, right. or, right. you know, see, right. there, you can see the difference between the responses. Right, right, right. And I think there's, what, uh, I think what I also notice is, um, facts, then, uh, can be presented differently depending upon the bias of how it's being interpreted. So one team can look at it this way, and then these people look at the same information in their in their context. And it's kind of that conversation about, well, we both believe in God, but my team has my God has to be better because my team needs to win, kind of thing. And it's like, well, the other team's thinking that too. So, so see, these kind of no-win situations that we create. So here's information. These are the numbers. And my Republicans friends, a few of them may say this about it. My Democratic friends may say this thing. It's the same numbers, but they're they're holding different viewpoints about what those numbers mean. So being that neutral place is so valuable. And then when you see someone tear down the neutrality, that's when you got problems, right? Because you, you're, you're, you're saying that there's a bias in the neutrality when there's not. That's the whole purpose of neutrality. There is no bias. It's just the facts. And it doesn't have the fiction around it. So sides will pick, will create a fiction around the facts. We do that all the time. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> well, there we are. Okay, so let's just, well, maybe we just need to notice a moment here and see where we are with this. We had a lot, of, okay, so distraction. Distraction gets us into reaction, gets us into repelling, uh, rejection. can start up a lot of stuff when we get distracted. And then other things are happening. If you're in a state of distraction, you know that it's taking you away from a viewpoint you had. Now, you may need to be distracted from that viewpoint because in holding that focus, you're creating an energy there that may be wanted or not appreciated. So it can serve in that way, um, but it can also take be taking you away from really noticing the bigger picture. And we like to use consciousness as the bigger picture here in this. And so what we want to set up is that consciousness has, it can afford lots of viewpoints at the same time, 
knowing that everything is in a state of, okay, and this is what's really important that we're finding, is that no matter what is showing up, I'm okay. If you have that in that reality-based set that you operate out of, all this just starts to be recognized for what it is. So notice how you are in your reality set. Are you okay? And is this all just stuff playing out? If you can hold that you're okay, and I mean okay in the sense that no matter what it looks like, life is present and it feels good, then using that as your foundation, the rest of this stuff shakes down. I don't know. What's your term you might use, Joan? I got nothing. I'll tell you why. Because I suddenly <laughs> feel I'm in this I'm in this nice little floaty space and suddenly I, I'm just bored with this topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> it's like not, not doing anything for me. So it's like, well, what is that about? I think that has to do with um, when you shift to the... I'll tell you, when you shift to a place of neutrality, it's not that everything becomes boring, but it doesn't have that charge. Takes and, out of it. Right, and so you just shift to something yeah. that's more pleasant. Right. Yeah, and does that have as much value as the drama? I think this is important, that, and maybe this is the crux of the conversation. And when I say you're okay, I'm using that term, is that there is a state of peace available, and that's maybe what it is. It's like there is no drama in that. And is that as important to you, the individual, each of us, as having the upset. If you're set for upset, you're going to feel better when you're in a state of upset, no matter what it is. If you've recalibrated yourself to, I know what having a sense of peace feels like, and that feels better to me, then that's what you organize yourself around. And so this is what's showing up, I think, is where people hold themselves. Do we like this discord? I didn't think I did, but I think it's more important because I keep going there instead of where this is, where, huh, I'm just going to go scuba diving. Right? Maybe that's where we're at. Yes. I think that's, <laughs> yes, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I want to be someplace tropical and warm. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I, I down know, the west, east coast is probably pretty, yeah. Right. Snowbound. You know, actually, come to think of it, too, is is that what I have noticed with this distraction is it affects my creativity mm. and it affects my ability to even have a vision of what I want to create. Mm. And I, that's really noticeable because... As consciousness, that's really our purpose here. The essence that we're here to create, we're here to experience life. And if you've got something that is so distracting, it takes you away from that essence. It's a it's a pretty potent distraction. Hmm. So, what could you be doing then? That opens up a whole conversation. If you're not upset. well. Um, if, yeah. if you're not upset, what you could do. Well, <laughs> but it's how to be creative in your upset, maybe. So people are marching, people are signing petitions, people are out working the streets differently, <laughs> differently than they may have been. <laughs> Sorry about that. What that shows up with as they're out there helping each other. That's right. what I see creatively. The, you know, it's like. People are, you can be pushed to that place or you can come to that place unwillingly uh, or you can come to that place of how can I be useful? How can I help change? Because it's back, going back to realizing that it starts with us. Each of us is the individual in the collective and then the collective will start shifting around, right? We're being asked to participate in ways that maybe people or whoever's having their agenda dance might not have foreseen. Right. It, 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 with that, yes, it's definitely that that those people with their agenda dance is that everything seems to be backfiring. Mm -hmm. So their their intent is to, you know, upset or 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 distract, 
And when people are using that instead to empower themselves, to take action from uh, an empowered state, not a reactive state, mm-hmm. then, um, you know, that, then it's backfired. And so we are definitely seeing evidence of people out there, you know, res- responding from a lot of strength. And it does, you know, it's reversing a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's all opening up. And, you know, the challenge being that it's not an assault from one beachhead. <laughs> You hear me looking, listening to me use these terminology. You know, it's about women and the relationship to men. It's about taking care of the elderly, the poor, and the infirm. It's about deciding uh, that what somebody sounds like, looks like, believes in is enough to to discredit them. And so each of us is in this mess. And it feels very messy. And so, once again, we have to be paying attention and going, okay, is that true? Or is that my fear? So what is, because those emotions are going to color something, whether it feels like a fact or a fiction to me, definitely. You know, it, it, it gives me that bias to look at those, that information that's there. So... There we go. Well, you know, yes, there we go. I'm glad what you just said because I was launching into another thing. <laughs> you know, there's a, there is an aspect of consciousness that loves the drama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because the reason why we created physical form was to experience the opposite of, of who we really are. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be very dramatic. And, which is the opposite of the wonderful, calm, peacefulness that we are. That's not how I want to play the game, but there are people out there right. that are really right. enjoying that. Right. Well, I think it's important not to judge ourselves for how we feel about things. It's okay. Everybody's. That's what, you know, the full range spectrum of emotional terrain is about. And there is a lot of... You can feel out there resistance to going to certain places in your emotions. And this is giving you access to things that you may have not paid attention to or deliberately said, I'm not going there, and you find yourself going there. And so you're having to meet your own resistance about your resistance. So um, that's why you go to heart where we're at right now, everybody, and you allow that information to really register and settle. And so you can feel, if you add potential, if you ask how is this useful to feel this way about something, what is going to come out of that? I think it's a, that's why it's so exciting to me. And I can admit I'm kind of weird about that, but I find people fascinating. Um, I find consciousness the whole the whole reality fascinating. So I've been places where I felt really bad. I don't like that, so And it is it it's I view it in terms of uh creativity mm-hmm. and to consciousness there's no good or bad to our creativity. Right. So if you've created a bunch of crappy terrible things it mm-hmm. is as creative mm-hmm. as wonderful fabulous things mm-hmm. and we're excited by all of those yeah and you can't you know there are things i personally would uh, don't need in my life but then there's those things that i realize it's all it's still all right it's still all right if i don't like something right it's 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 just part of the spectrum of what's available out there. So um, I ch- tend to step back from people wanting to demonize or make someone bad or, yeah, it, you know, and, and, and all that. I just kind of find myself, hmm, all is in consciousness. All is created. So there's no good, bad, ugly. It's, those are personal reflections. That's a human reflection interpretation of that information so yeah you know what i completely forgot about time and space while we're floating <laughs> down this river so we're going to really quick take a commercial break i just want to let you know that you're listening to conscious conversations with joan and janet i'm joan 
And I'm Janet. And we will be right back after these messages. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you are dealing with? Take a journey into your enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Janet is a subtle energies empath accessing the field of potential with warmth, humor, and support. She will help you to hear what your inner voice is saying. She will share with you how to appreciate who you are now and offer you new ways to understand and transform your issues. Reach her at www.janetandbeyond.com. That's JanetAndBeyond.com. Again, JanetAndBeyond.com. Transformation is possible. You can enjoy new outcomes in your current experiences. They can happen in the blink of an eye. Is your soul calling you to do something more meaningful with your life? Do you feel crazy for wanting to quit your secure job? Perhaps you are waiting until you retire to do what you love. Maybe you are too daunted to follow your dream. If any of these match your life, then Joan Newcomb's Purpose and Passion Coaching Program is just for you. In just 12 weeks, you will discover who you essentially are and why you are here. Learn to live as your greater self and navigate with conscious mastery. Go to Joan dash newcomb.com that's joan dash newcomb.com for all of her coaching programs you are listening to conscious conversations with joan and janet to reach our program please send questions and comments to conscious with joan and janet at gmail.com that's conscious with joan and janet at gmail.com now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm Joan, along here with Janet, and we've been talking about fact, fiction, and consciousness. And any any last words that we have on this subject? Mm, well, just enjoy. And I guess the question is, how can I enjoy when there's all this misery available? Yes. And it's like, all that misery available has nothing to do with my joy. So yes. those are, two, you know, those are two separate things. Um, and it, that's how I'm putting that in that context. So we, d we do tend to think in absolutes. We tend to think in irreconcilable. Uh, we tend to think in a lot of ways. And that's an act of mind and that's an act of bias. So I go back to heart-centered awareness and I just look at the information. I call it all information and stuff because that depersonalizes it and takes the triggering mechanisms away. And I just go, okay, how is this useful? Well, I can see where that was or I can see where I'm using it as a creative drive. Okay, and what am I getting out of it? And is it worth it? And... Is it still appropriate? May have been appropriate at one time, but maybe it's not. So then I just allow myself to have a different sense of control, a different sense of flow about it. So it's not having to make it something. It's just a recognizing how I'm being using the information and, and being different with it this time. Those would be my words. <laughs> Well, that is lovely. <laughs> how do you do it? Um, I'm How I do it is I shift my focus to the next indicated thing. And the next indicated thing that I have occurring to me <laughs> is how to stay connected after the show. So an invitation to go deeper with us and connect with us beyond the show is that we have a website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet .com, 
And there you can listen to the podcast, so you can listen to all our previous shows in podcast. You can also read our blogs. Jan writes wonderfully, and so do I. <laughs> and then you can also go to uh, learn about our meetups. Uh, Jan has two meetups in Portland on Tuesdays and on Thursdays in her lovely home. And I have meetups uh, usually on weekends all around the Puget Sound in Seattle, Bellevue, Tacoma, and University Place, and then other places as well on special occasions. You can also learn about Janet's sessions. And do you want to say uh, a minute or two on your sessions? Oh, wow. Well, you know, I like to help people break down their stories, the stories that are holding the issue. So we look, we start from the place of how you're noticing your life, which comes in your issues. And if that could be different, or if that could be released of its setness that you have, what could happen? So it's really about, I feel like a myth buster. You know, most of our stories are myths, really. They're, they're, we tend to think of them written in stone and maybe somewhere they are. And there's always, in consciousness, no time or space. So you can take what you think you've been or how you've been showing up and just look at it, shift it to the moment, and you can reframe it. You can reorganize it. And um, I help people do that. So depending upon what the issue might be, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, psychological, psychic, or spiritual, most often things coming from several different approaches, several different reality sets. So we get to play with those, and people get to have wonderful experiences. So that's what we do. And my sessions are uh, different nowadays. I, I do do occasional single shot sessions, but my focus now more is on coaching people over long term. So I have a couple of different containers uh, that I hold people for eight weeks or 12 weeks because that way you can actually get momentum going and yeah. see yeah. change happen. And I also will come from more of a teaching standpoint on teaching you how to do this for yourself. So I'm all about navigating reality differently. I want to let folks know about my upcoming meetups. I have a meetup in Bellevue on this Sunday, the 19th. It's at the downtown library in Bellevue. It's actually in conference room number four. I'm there from 12 to 2.30. We are there from 12 to 2.30. It's kind of a fun group of people. And then uh, I will be at Emerald Spiral in Kent on the 25th. That's a Saturday from 9 to 5, I think it is. I'll be in booth number 50, so come by and see me there. And then I have this new offering. It's Consciousness Masterclasses. So if you've attended my meetups or my webinars, you have learned a lot about yourself as consciousness and how to navigate life uh, using parallel universes. And a masterclass takes you much deeper. So if you want to go beyond parallel universes, then this is for you. Uh, mastering new ways of navigating life as consciousness. This is the introductory session you can attend by webinar if you're not in the local area. And you can attend by webinar. That's on Thursday, March the 23rd at 12 p.m. Pacific. And then you can also meet me in person in Tacoma on Monday, March 27th at 5.30 at Cutters Point Coffee on Pearl and I, the master class there or in Seattle on April 9th, Sunday, April 9th at 1 p.m., hopefully in Fremont. So all of that is listed on both websites now as well. Yeah, I think what's important from my awareness with people um, is that a lot of it's about empowering each of us. And we do that sometimes it's often by being a witness for our, our clients and in a group and acknowledging that there's something at play in many different ways. And it's about grace, support, non-judgment and bringing that. And I think what shows up in times of stress definitely is people's own skill sets start to show up. And so it's fostering what is your truth and having it heard to the level where you can hear it for yourself. And so we're reinforcing that each of us does have an authentic voice, does have this connection, this consciousness, and making it easier. And we're inviting everyone, whether it's me or Joan or whoever you might be going to, that you 
you realize that it's really nice sometimes to take your stuff to someone else and have them sort through it. And then there's really nice to take your stuff to someone to have them sort through it so it allows you to recognize what's at play. And uh, lots of different ways to experience being. So That's a lovely way to sum it up. Yeah. Well, you've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and I'm your host, Joan. And I'm Janet, and it's so nice to be, have spent this time with you, everyone. Yes, tune in next week, same time, same channels. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And thanks so much for helping to co-create the show, no matter if you're listening live or on demand. You energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com. Tune in next week for another great show. And until then, keep enjoying this wonderful adventure we call life. Thank you.